So we are seeing the S&P 500 once again hit new all-time highs, bringing the overall index to over 20% year to date. Now many market participants are speculating on whether the stock market bull run is just picking up more steam or if the stock market party is about to be over. Now for those of you guys familiar with the channel, you guys know that I love to parse through several financial websites to kind of just get a general consensus of what many market participants are seeing and I came across this article from Yahoo that I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys. Now this article highlighted how the S&P 500 bull run was officially declared in June 2023 and at two years young is well shy of the average run of 5.5 years and the run up of 60% is a far cry from the average 180% gain that we see in bull cycles. Now when we take a look at the history of bull runs dating back to 1949, we do see that this current cycle is on the shorter end compared to a lot of the previous cycles. But now of course we know that previous price action is not indicative of future performance, but one thing I wanna highlight is this quote written by Mark Twain saying that history doesn't repeat itself but it often rhymes. But now in this video, I wanna go ahead and touch on why I'm currently bullish, starting off with the macro backdrop, and I wanna highlight that if you just take a look at the headlines, it may be a bit misleading, especially when you see headlines like this, reading that grocery prices rise again in September, candy prices expected to remain elevated ahead of Halloween. Now when you see headlines like this, it may spark fears of inflation surging up again, but the reality is that yes, inflation is much higher than it was four years ago, but the trend of inflation is still softening down, especially if we take a look at the rate of inflation on a year over year basis, we see that it's clearly trending downward. And so with the combination of the inflationary trends cooling downwards, with also the labor markets remaining pretty steady, it creates this environment that's pretty conducive for the markets to continue moving up. But I also wanna go ahead and touch on things from a technical perspective as well, because when you look at the last three breakouts that we saw in the S&P 500, we saw there was one breakout at 10.70%, another breakout at 15.48%, and then another breakout at 7.79%, and the average breakout across these recent instances is about 11.33%. And if you're wondering how I came to that conclusion, it's simply just adding the percentage moves after the breakouts, and then dividing it by three, making it 11.33%. But of course, as I mentioned earlier, previous price action is not indicative of future performance, and I wanna go ahead and touch on a couple of other topics as well, but before we do so, just a friendly reminder that if you have not done so already, click that subscribe button because it really does help out with the channel, and each person that hits that subscribe button equals another treat for my other cat, Missy, and believe me, she loves her treats. And now recently, Tom Lee, who's a very popular financial analyst came out with some pretty bullish statements that I wanted to quickly just share with you guys right over here. You, you think we just have to get the election out of the way and then it sort of clears the way for what you still think can be a pretty decent rally. I think your target's 6,000 or around that. Yeah, Scott, there's a lot of firepower uh, supporting stocks uh, post-election because we've got a Fed that's dovish and the economy looks healthy. I, I don't think we're in a recession. And so, I, I, you know, the three-month and six-month outlooks are very strong for stocks. And I think China, um, while there's maybe some hesitation, but China's government is really starting to unleash some measures, and that's supportive of that region finally turning. And, of course, the third factor is, uh, I think after two years, investors who've been very cautious are starting to realize that, you know, the $6 trillion of cash on the sidelines and the low levels of margin debt need to be put to work at a time when the Fed is supporting the economy. The other possible headwinds, I, I think, are, are ones that are maybe outside of the political cycle, at, at least at, as people you know, refer to them. Valuations, they say, are, are too rich uh, or stretched, right? Um, the S&P is about 21 and a half. That's above, obviously, its historical average. Yields are up. Now, you could make the argument that they're up for the right reason, but I think they're still up a little bit more than people thought they might be after the Fed did its 50. And then yeah. if the Fed's going to be a little bit slower and smaller in the way they progress with rate cuts, is that an issue? Of course, the flip side of that is, well, why would they need to do anything anymore anyway? Because the economy is as resilient as you just suggested it is. Yeah. Um, well, on all those points, um, Scott, you know, on valuation, I know people 
use the aggregate number for the S&P, but it, it is misleading because, as we know, uh, the top seven stocks uh, do have a higher deserve multiple. And the median P.E., it's not that much cheaper, but it's around 18 times. But that's not a bad deal considering the 10-year yield is actually at 25 P.E. And with regard to the Fed cuts possibly slowing, you, you know, I think the, the, what really matters now is the Fed is on a path to essentially normalize interest rates back towards neutral because the inflation pressures are ebbing. I mean, I think even CPI this week, even though it was a little hotter than expected, really didn't send the signal that inflation's reaccelerating. And so the Fed is, you know, on a path towards, you know, towards 3%. And, and I think that's really constructive for stocks. Now, in addition to what Tom Lee mentioned, if we take a look at the market from a seasonal perspective, we are in that season in October, November, December, the last ending of the year, where we tend to see the market historically from 1950 all the way until, you know, last year, 2023, end up being pretty bullish. And if we take a look at the global liquidity index over time, we're in this period where we're seeing rising liquidity, which often supports stock market growth because there's more money circulating in the economy. And if we had to compare where we are in the liquidity cycle to a banana getting ripe, we're currently at this period where we're barely right. Which by the way, if you enjoy someone comparing the macro cycle, the economy to a banana, make sure to hit that like button as that also helps out with the channel. But moving on to earnings season, the consensus is that we are expecting earnings to rebound further. And if we take a look at what the estimates for 2024 fourth quarter are, they're pretty high, which is also pretty bullish. Now, real quickly, touching back from a technical perspective, I also forgot to mention that when you overlay a directional movement index, we see this convergence take place, which is similar to what we saw previously in the last breakouts, which again is just another technical perspective showing that we're pretty much entering into more bullish times. This is great. Now, pretty much looking at things from a fundamental perspective, a seasonal perspective, a macro perspective, and a technical perspective, things are looking pretty bullish. But of course, we still have to be a bit cautious as we still know that there's tensions taking place in the Middle East, and we know that the market does not like uncertainty and geopolitical conflict could quickly change the landscape of what we're seeing in the markets, which I believe would likely just be something that's short term and actually provide a buying opportunity. But of course, that's still something that's on the backdrop that we kind of unfortunately have to be aware of. For example, just recently, we had the president of Russia and the Iranian president meet to kind of discuss the ongoing crisis in the Middle East. And, you know, of course, we don't know what exactly is being said, but you really can't tell when you involve someone like Putin into the conversation. And so although we are very bullish of, you know, many fronts of what we're seeing in the market, we still have to be pretty cautious. And of course, this is not financial advice. This is just something that I wanted you guys to kind of be aware of in terms of what we're seeing from global news. Now, real quick, just a friendly reminder, make sure to check out the links in the description down below as well, because one of the links is gonna be a link to join my free weekly market post insights where every single week I send out a newsletter of what we're paying attention to in the markets. And so if you enjoyed the content in this video, you'll definitely enjoy receiving the free weekly newsletter. So make sure to check that out. And before you guys go, make sure to check out this next video right over here and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care guys.